Hi, my name is Davis Wyszewski, 3D Specialist at Autodesk. This video is showing three demos that I did at GDC earlier this year. I've broken it up in I've broken this video up into three parts. So the first part is procedural texturing, looking at Substance Designer through to my LT and then into Stingray. Part two is using physics inside of Stingray, but then making a very basic sort of uh, car and then applying that physics animation process to the car and then bring it into Stingray. And part three is object and character animation from Max into Stingray. I've got these links here. These are um, places you can go to get uh, like free evaluations um, of Stingray if you haven't already had a look at Stingray. These are some of the addresses you can go to to get that those free evaluations of Stingray and have a look at it. And these links here, the top one is obviously the YouTube channel CG Punch. Um, the next one is my Twitter account and finally Facebook Autodesk m and &E ANZ. So we post a lot of events and and, and uh, things on the ANZ page here. All right, part one, let's get started. So before I get started, I just want to make a quick shout out and a big thank you to Wes McDermott and all the guys and girls at Algorithmic for helping me with this. So you can see here, we've got this truck and it's made up of a, a couple of different um, components and each of these components actually have up to four or six different textures so we'll just have a look at the crane part of the truck here and we'll go into into um, this area here into the um, substance file here and you can see that the crane is made up of a diffuse a normal a specular and a gloss so if you um, extrapolate that out we've got four four different textures um, we've got about five or six different components here we end up with about 24 different textures i think it's about 26 because we've got a couple of emissive textures that are sitting in there as well so the reason i want to draw your attention to that is for two reasons one you can imagine that if i had this truck and i wanted to say change a color very quickly the old way of doing it i'd have to go all the way back to the base uh, layer of where the color is and go in and change that base layer. With um, Substance Painter I can basically change the color on the fly. I can also change the um, uh, level of detail, I can change where the rust sits, I can change where all, you know, so many aspects of this and I'll go into that in a little bit more detail. But I also want to draw your attention to the size of the actual Substance file as well. So if we go in here uh, you can see um, uh, I've got this SBSAR file here. So if I just go into where that's sitting, I just want to show you the actual size of it. So you can see here, this is a substance file here. And we're basically looking at something that's under under 10 megs. That's got all of these textures, all of this information that's sitting here. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's have a look at how we build out these shader nodes and actually get them into Stingray. Alrighty, so I've got this, um, I've got the truck here, and I'm just turning on the lights and everything, so you can see I've got my lights happening in my scene here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring in the substance file and I'm going to build out those shader nodes so you can actually see that working. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my well, let's just uh, let's just close that down and make that a little bit bigger, and let's just go up into Windows here and go to my Node Editor. So I'm going to use my Node Editor to build out these. So the first thing I just want to clean this up here. So I'm just going to delete the um, uh, shader that's already sitting there, and then I'm going to right click on this, go Create Node, and then go down to my Substance. And there you see, I've got it here. Now, all I need to do is bring in that substance file that I just showed you, which is sitting here, vehicle. And you can see here, I've got my substance graph, which has got the crane. Now I can choose lower deck, tires, upper deck, all, all the components here. We'll start with crane here, and I've got my diffuse, normal, specular, gloss. And then I'm just gonna go create shader network. And it's as simple as that. Now you can see the, the gloss didn't come through, but that's not a big deal. I can just manually get that happening. And you can see here, we'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what's happening in the node editor. 
Uh, there is my gloss that's sitting there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... Um, I mean, I can put that into anything, but I'm just going to put that into my roughness. So you can see I brought that across from my node editor into my attribute editor, but I can just as easily um, open out my node, my nodes in the node editor, and you can see I've gone from um, uh, out alpha into roughness, and I can just as easily draw it across here. So I can go from out to, to roughness like so. And the great thing with this, something I want to draw your attention to as well, is that, and this is one of the things I do love about using node editors, is that it's color graded, or, or color, color graded, it's um, color matched. So output and input devices are color matched. So for instance, I couldn't not, I couldn't put the out alpha into say, um, oh, let, let's look, just a transparency here, um, because that's red. So I'd have to go uh, color out into transparency and you can see we've got no blues here. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's how you do that. All right, now it's just a simple matter of bringing that onto uh, the, 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 the crane. I can just drag that across like so, and you can see it's dropped that on there now. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit how to navigate through the node editor and use that a little bit more efficiently. But before we do that, let me just put that off to the side like so. We just want to look at the actual substance file that we've got here and the texture that we've got here. So going into here, you can see that we've got our diffuse normal specular gloss, which we talked about earlier. But we've also got this absolute uh, width, which is basically our resolution of this texture. So I can change that. So right now it's sitting at 5. 12, I can bump that all the way up to like a 2K texture. It takes a few seconds to catch up, but just you can see now that uh, it's a lot more, there's a lot more resolution there. And vice versa, I can drop that down to a 32 bit. And you can see um, that's dropped that down. So, what's great about this is I'm not scaling the texture up or down from, say, a base texture. Like, I'm not using a 2K texture. That I've made and then it scales it down or um, for instance a, a 1k texture and it scales it up every time I change this resolution it rebuilds it so that's actually a 2k texture now when it comes back not a texture that's been scaled up to to meet 2k resolution so we can go into some of the attributes here as well and you can see we can change like the random seed we can change the paint effect um, we can change where uh, the alpha, we can also change some of the effects here, like the rust um, on, on this. And, and I'll just show you how quickly it is to do that. So let's just say we've gone from this yellow, I just want to go like a blue. You can see it's changed that color really quickly. And um, let's just change the, the randomness of where the rust and everything is. See what that looks like. You can see that it's changed the randomness of it. We can change where the, how the rust is spread. Let's just move that slider a bit. And you can see that the rust will move around differently here. You can see we've got more rust now that's happening. Um, we can also go down and we've got our setting for our normals. So right now it's set to OpenGL, but you can see we can change it uh, for, for different settings. Uh, also, um, this is our output texture, so for engine, when you're actually exporting it out. So right now, by default, it's set at 512, so it's going to export out at a 512 texture. So when I go to export this, I want to, you know, if I want to want it to be exported at 2K, then I'll set it to, to that. So that's navigating through um, substance file there. So let's just move back to the node editor here, and you can see I've got... Um, uh, this network sort of built out like so. Now if I want to add another uh, shader node to this, or uh, so let, let's just say I want to do the, um, the body of the truck now. I, what I could do is I could just sort of move to the side here and, and go right click, uh, create node and, and go on. But then what will end up happening is I'll have all these networks all over the place. The way I prefer to work is by bookmarking these. So I just select it all and then just go up to bookmark and then just go create bookmark 
and then I'm going to call that uh, crane. And go OK to that. And then I'm just going to delete this and then go create node, make another substance node. Uh, this time, bring it in again. And then this time, instead of the crane, let's go uh, upper deck. Create that network out. We just need to bring that gloss in. Uh, where, where are you? There you are. And then, just so we can see what that looks like, I'm just going to drop it on there. And you can see we've got that shader there. Let's just dr uh, knock up the resolution a bit so it looks a little bit better. Let's just make that um, 1K texture. There we go. And then what I'm going to do in the node editor here is I'm just going to bookmark this as well. Um, what's this? Upper deck. Just go OK to that. And then if I delete that, What's great about this now is if I want to go back and re-edit, say, or, or do some more work on the crane part, the blue bit here, all I need to do is go into my node editor and then just go bookmark crane and you can see it brings it up here. And then if I want to, and then I can go in and start editing this, doing whatever I want to do in here. And then if I want to go to the upper deck, I just have to click on upper deck. So you can see with an object like this with so many components this is a nice neat and easy way of working okay so i won't bore you with going through that process to texture the rest of the 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 vehicle but you get the idea you know it, it's basically just rinse and repeat exactly what i just showed you and that'll do the whole thing really really simple and easy so the next thing i want to show you here is we've basically got four different ways that we can connect with stingray so the first way is I can connect through Stingray here doing a live uh, camera link or yeah, live, live viewport, viewport camera link. So I, sh I talked about this in my last video when I talked about, um, when I was talking about Stingray. Uh, won't go into it in this one, but I just want to show that this is one of the ways that we can connect. Uh, the next one is if we go over to file, you can see here we've got all these send to, and we've had that for a while in Maya and Max and, and Mudbox and all that. Uh, but we've got the send to Stingray. So I can do a send all or send select. And that basically is just doing uh, an FBX export. In fact, under the hood of all of this, that it's essentially doing an FBX export anyway. The next is I can use the game exporter. Now, what I like about the game exporter is this is a fantastic way of managing your files. So you can see here, I, I can select an object and this is great for, well, I mean, it's great for just props and, and non-animated assets, but it's also fantastic for animated assets as well. So what's good is it actually sets out my whole uh, path structure for my textures, my geo, animations, rigging, all of that stuff is set. Uh, and I can and I can basically drop it straight into my Stingray paths and my Stingray, Stingray folders that I've already set up in Stingray. So this is a great way if you start creating a lot of assets and you know you don't want to worry about oh have I got this texture, have I got that animation. This basically wraps it all up for you and in one easy exporter and sends it out with a few few mouse button clicks, nice and simple. Uh, and then oldie but a goodie is just the basic export all or export selected. So like I said, just like the other two were using FBX, th this is just the old way um, that you can export an FBX as well. All right, so let's have a look at what this looks like in Stingray. So you can see we're in Stingray here and First thing I want to draw your attention to in the Stingray viewport is this um, one for one texture parity that we're getting. So basically you can see we've got the crane here and what we're seeing in the viewport in Stingray 
is basically what we were seeing in the viewport in LT, well, before I changed it blue. But you can see that resolution's there, the lighting's there, the specular's there, all that stuff's there. Um, let's just do a, a test level so we can actually see what that looks like. So you can see, again, I'm testing the level. So basically, what I'm seeing, this is final game playthrough, like what, I, what I'd be seeing if I had this in the game. And you can see what I'm seeing in the viewport in Stingray is what I'm seeing in the final game. But more importantly, what I'm seeing in the viewport in Myra LT is what I actually see in the final game export. The reason I brought in these two different cranes here is one of them is using uh, the Stingray PBS shader. And this one here is just using the uh, Substance shader. So what I, what I just wanted to draw your attention to is I've got kind of like two shaders here built off the the Substance shader network that we were just looking at in, Sting, in, in Myra LT. But we can use either PBS shader or stay with the, sh the, the Substance shader and we're really getting essentially the same thing that we see in the final in, in Stingray. Let's add some textures to this fella and I just want to show you how simple it is to do that. So you can see here we've got all the maps that we had previously in LT and we've got all the maps sort of sitting laid out like so. Now I can just quite simply and quite quickly just add these color maps, the normal maps, the, the roughness map, the emissive map, all that stuff just by going in here and selecting it. So the one I want is this fella here which is um, the last three numbers is 648 648 and I just want to go use color map you can see that's dropped that guy in there now I can use my normal map as well and again the normal map I want last three digits is 680 which is this guy here and then just go use normal map you can see it's dropped in all that uh, roughness and everything there all right so that's a quick look at substance painter getting your substance textures into lt and from lt into stingray next let's have a look at some physics animation Okay, so part two, we're going to look at getting car animation into Stingray using PhysX. So what we're going to do is we're, in essence, we're just going to copy the attributes of this vehicle here and we're going to put that on a new vehicle that we're making. So there's a couple of things. It's, it's actually a really easy thing to do. Really, all we need to do is adhere to a few simple guidelines and most of those guidelines are just naming conventions first thing I want to do is just um, show you what the animation of, of the car looks like in engine. So you can see we've got the car driving. You can jump over stuff uh, and run into things and almost fall over. Alright, so if we have a look at the car itself going to go into the unit editor here and what we've got is we've got the body here which is called car body and we've got the tires which are called wheel front pass um, wheel back pass wheel front drive and wheel back drive. So when we make our, our uh, model in Maya, we need to make sure that the naming convention is the same as this because basically that's how it's going to be able to, that's how Stingray is going to be able to see the model. Okay, so let's go into Maya LT and just make a very quick car. Okay, so let's create a, um, uh, cube and let's make that um, just 100 
by uh, 60 by 200. Okay, so that's that's this is now when I say we're making a basic car, this is it can't get more basic than this. This is this is the body of the car. So as you imagine, uh, the tires are basically just going to be cylinders. And we'll just make those cylinders uh, 25 by 25. And then all I need to do is just rotate that so it's in the right orientation for the for what the wheels are going to be. Now, keyboard shortcut here, just hold down J. It does the snap rotation. So I'm guaranteed that I'm going to get that at 90 degrees or 180 or whatever I want it to be. And I'm just going to move that into position where I want that tire to be. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to duplicate that, move the duplicated tire over to the other side. And then I'm just going to select and duplicate both of them and move that forward. So these are going to be the front tires. So keyboard shortcut for that is just Control D. That does your duplication of your models. <clears throat> so let's make this area the front and this area the back. So like I said, it's all about naming convention here. So we want this basically to copy or, or all the attributes from the, the taxi, the yellow taxi, to be copied onto this. And the best way to do that, and the only real way to do that, is by making sure we adhere to the naming convention. So the body in that model was called car body. So let's change this one to car body. change this one to okay so being that this was made in America and they drive on the other side of the road and we're in Australia and we drive on the opposite side of the road this is probably the thing I get confused about the most is just remembering that which side is driver side which side is passenger side so because the model in Stingray was made in in the US um, this side being the left hand side is going to be the driver side so this needs to be um, front underscore wheel drive driver, which means this one is rear underscore wheel driver and this is front underscore actually let me just double check I think I'm mucking up that naming convention so what am I calling it front wheel driver let me just double check what that is actually called Ah, wheel underscore rear. So it starts with we with wheel. Wheel front pass. Okay, my mistake. Um, so let's just go back to that and change that naming convention so we've got that right. So that is wheel underscore front driver wheel underscore rear driver wheel underscore front pass I think pass yes and 
wheel underscore rear pass. Okay, so that's all the naming of that sorted. Car body, yes, wheel. Make sure I've got that all right. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so the next thing we need to do is just group this all together. So I'm just going to select this and group that together. So Control G is keyboard shortcut for grouping. Um, and then I'm just going to call this car. Okay, now what I need to do is um, I need to make sure that my Z orientation for this group is up, which is the same way as Stingray Z. So I could try and rotate all the individual objects and th that won't work. So the easiest way of doing that is creating this group and then rotating the Z orientation for the group. So unfortunately, if I do that with all these objects in the group, they'll move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the objects and then just quickly move them out, grab the car group, and then just go to my rotation and in rotation here, I'm going to type in um, negative 90 and negative 180. And then you'll see in that group, my Z is now up. And then all I need to do is grab all the objects and move them back into that group. Now, one last thing I, I need to do here is I need to make sure with the group I move this up so that the bottom of the tires is actually on the ground plane because the ground plane in Maya and Max and all that is the ground plane in Stingray. So right now the ground plane is sitting sort of in the middle area here which would mean when I brought that into Stingray the car would be driving, the, uh, the ground plane would be sitting right here. So I'm just going to move that up. Uh, let's just go Let's just go to front view. Let's make sure I've got that all good. That's, there we go. Okay, and just like I showed you before, we've got all those options of exporting it out, but I'm just going to do a simple um, file export select, uh, export all. I'm going to call that my car underscore car and save that. All right, so let's go into Stingray and get this working. Okay, so we don't need this car now, so I'm just going to delete this guy. And then in models here, you can see I've already brought in the folder of my car, and then inside that, there's um, there's the model, my car. So it's a simple process of just, um, so in this here, I can just go file, uh, create folder, and I called it my car. And then inside that folder to actually import that in, I just go import asset, and then you can go through and grab your assets from wherever you, wherever they are. So there, I grabbed my car from there. And then I'm just going to drag that into the viewport. All right, so I've got that sitting in the viewport here, but right now it's not, I haven't got any of the animations that were inherent in the taxi um, working on this. So the first thing I need to do is I need to change the player, so the scripting go into Lua and change um, just a few words in here, uh, just a few lines of code actually in here. Uh, so when it starts to play, it knows which model to pull. So I'm going to go into this here um, just by double clicking. And then I'm going to scroll down to, I think it's line 110. It's line 110. Yep. And you can see here what it's doing is it, this is where it's looking for the asset or, or the model that it's going to use. And right now it is looking for, so it's looking for models, then the folder 
four-wheel drive and then inside the folder four-wheel drive the, the model called four-wheel drive. So what I need to do is change that for, to models my underscore car and then so that's now looking at this folder and then I need to change that to my underscore car. So now that is going to look for models it's going to skip this one and go to my folder here which is my car and then inside that the, the model which is called my car as well and then I just hit the save button and we're good to go so that's that that part done <clears throat> now what we need to do is we need to add a physics actor to this car so I'm going to go into here and then just double click to bring up the unit editor here and then I'm going to select the car and select the car body and then go to create physics actor you can see now I've got physics actor here so I need to go over here and I need to change this name to vehicle actor Um, I can leave uh, the node as car body, the actor template, I want to change that to vehicle. Uh, the mass I'm going to leave at that. And then inside here, the mesh is going to be car body. The type, we're going to change that to convex computed. Material, let's make it rubber so it's nice and bouncy. And the shape template. I'm going to change that to vehicle as well. Okay, so that's the physics actor on the body, but we actually need the physics actor on the wheels on on the whole lot. The quickest way of doing that is so I just I just hit the save button here, which brings up my car. So now I've got my car physics actor. So the quickest way of getting the rest of those attributes onto this is just going to the four-wheel drive physics actor and literally just copying everything from that and dropping and then pasting it and dropping it onto this guy here. The easiest way to do that is just right click on this guy here and go show in Explorer. That's a four-wheel drive there and that's a physics actor there. So I can just right click on that and go open with notepad and so all I need to do here is go copy paste and then open up my car physics actor and then paste on there and then just save that out now that's got all the attributes from the four-wheel drive physics actor is now sitting in my car physics and then if we've done all of this right um, I should be able to just do a test level and this car now will be driving. So you can drive over stuff. And crash into things. And there you go, that's a very quick and easy way that you can test your car models by copying pasting script that's already sitting in the um, demo levels that ship with Stingray. Finally, we're going to look at some object and character animation. So first I want to say a big thank you to Black Forest Games for supplying me with this asset here. Um, so this windmill comes from these guys. Now basically with this windmill what we've got is just a very simple sort of um, linear animation going on here as you can see. Now if we go into the graph editor you can see very very simple very simple animation going on here. So 
you know, we can adjust this in here. We can muck around with this. Um, we can make it, um, you know, put some Bezier curves or whatever we want on this. But basically what we're wanting is this windmill to be a background object where the blades are just turning all the time. So what I've done is I've exported this out. Nice and simple FBX export with the animation here. Uh, and then we bring that into Stingray. And you notice I've already, I've skipped ahead. I've already done the import like I showed earlier. Uh, so we've got the models folder here. I've got um, the, the the windmill here, the textures and everything like that. Here it is here. Now if I just drag this into into the scene like so, you'll notice that there's no animation going on here. You can see that this is the rig or the bone that's um, got the animation attached to it. This is the animation that's attached to it and this is the model. So what we need to do is basically get that animation happening on the, the 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 rig. So what I need to do now is select the unit, right click on it and go create animation controller. I'm just going to leave the animation controller and call it mill. It's going to make it nice and simple. Everything else is called mill. So I'm just going to double click on that to open up the animation controller. Uh, and I've got this empty um, I've got this empty base layer here so I'm just going to delete that. And then what I'm going to do here is just go create clip state. And this clip state here, I'm going to go down to animation, add clips, and then I'm going to choose mill. And you can see now we've got this animation going on here. Now all I need to do is save this out and that animation now will be on that rig, which is underneath that model, which is then going to be operating. And you'll be seeing that happening in the viewport here. So I just hit the save. And then you can see now, when we go into the viewport, it's now animating. And what's great about this now is I can just drag in multiples of this. And I can actually go in and change the, um, the animation that's happening on this clip state. I can do a few things with it, but just to show you playback rate, just real nice, simple, quick way of changing things. Let's dial that up to say five and then just hit the save button. And now you notice that the windmills are rotating a lot quicker. All right, so that's getting basic object animation, working on, on um, props and that sort of stuff. So let's now have a look at doing that with characters and actually linking that with other animations. So getting walks to link with idols, with runs and so forth. So here you can see we've got Sp uh, here you can see we've got Sven animating in the scene, just doing a basic walk. So the process I went through here was importing the model like usual, like I showed you guys earlier, but then I also imported an animation set as well. Now this is where going back to the game exporter that I was showing in LT becomes really handy. So all of this gets laid out if I use a game exporter. What I've decided to do is just bring in some basic animations. I'll uh, I'm actually only going to use the idle run and walk and I've already created a I've already created an animation controller for this guy so I'm just going to open up the animation controller what I want to do here is drop in some clip states so the first clip state let's call that walk Create another one, we'll call that run, and we'll create a third one, and we'll call that idle. So let's just move these around, make it a little bit more. Okay, so idle, the animation that we want that to call up is idle. Walk, the animation we want that to call up is walk, and run. The animation we want that to call up is run. Okay, so we've got we've got all of that happening there. Now, what I what I want to do is create some animation events so that I can get basically get from an idle to a walk and a walk to a run and back and forth. So I just go into my animation events here and go add animation event, and I'm going to call that one two underscore walk.
another one. I'm going to call this to underscore run. And finally, to underscore idle. Then it's just a simple matter of going from idle, dragging out to walk. On walk, we want him to go from idle to walk and then back again. So from walk to idle. So on idle. From walk to run. So to run. And then from run back to walk. So to walk. From run to idle. So we'll say to idle. And then from idle to run. Let's say to run. Okay, so we've got to idle. So we want to go to walk. He starts walking, from walking to running, from running back to idle, from idle to running, running to walking, walking to running. So you can see now how, I mean this is a very simple example, but you can see how we can start to very quickly build out our character animation tree and have all those interdependencies of, of animations. So let's just say I've got from idle to walk, but I don't want the I don't want him to go from idle to run. I want him to have to walk before he can run. So all I need to do is just uh, click this one here and just delete that. So now there is no um, he can't go from idle to run. He can go from run back to an idle, and we can see that now. So I'm at idle here. I can go to a walk and from a walk to a run, and from a run back to an idle, but from an idle. I can't go to walk. You can see many times as I want him to run, he can't. So it just shows you that it's very easy to sort of swap out um, and connect and disconnect animations that you want your characters to do. Alright, and I think that about covers it. Thanks for watching.